Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. Uh, one thing that I want to cover and that we're going to do today is the fear of snakes. Where does it come from? How does it manifest itself? What can you do to get yourself over that hump? Uh, I'm hoping this video will bring in some people that maybe aren't snake keepers um, to go ahead and, and help them uh, realize their fear, that it's rational, and how you can, you know, go ahead and, and take steps to get somewhere in a better place where you don't have a crippling fear of these animals through understanding. So stay tuned. Uh, if you're new here, hopefully you'll hit subscribe. Uh, see all the, uh, the snake related content that we have to offer you both in the form of eye candy and of course, uh, good solid information and education. So stay tuned. Welcome to this week's video, guys. Uh, today's help is going to be uh, Voodoo Queen. She's a very lovely animal. And hopefully, as I said, if some of you are afraid of snakes, hopefully it's not triggering you to see her. Uh, she's a very, very calm, very sweet animal. Uh, she's very personable. She's an animal that I hatched here myself. Uh, she's been with me every day of her life. Uh, she's, she's very reliable, very well-mannered. Um, so some of the things you can do and, and use this channel to help with your fear, which we'll get to eventually, um, is learn information about these. So there's a lot of behavior that this animal is exhibiting right now that tells me that she's calm and comfortable. So when you understand that kind of stuff, it's very, very easy to work with these animals and to, to have trust with them and have them trust you. Now you may never get to that level, but I would at least like you to be able to, to see her on video or to see pictures or to walk by a snake when you're out hiking and not have that crippling fear that you have now. Uh, hopefully this video will have something for everybody. Even if you are a snake keeper, maybe you'll learn something. So let's dive right in. Uh, first of all, the, um, the fear of snakes um, is something that about a third of adults have and two thirds of adults have anxiety uh, towards these animals. So that's a really large percentage of the population of the world that, you know, is, is nervous about these animals. And so you'd wonder, how is that so widespread? And so they've done a lot of scientific research with this stuff. And everybody's always debating, is it a learned fear or is it something that's innate? And the truth is, it's both. And it can be, it can be both in different cases. Obviously, if you're a child and your parents are very afraid of something and te they teach you to be afraid of that, then you can go ahead and, and learn a fear that maybe you didn't have. But through this, this research and these studies, which there's, is ongoing, so we don't know everything, uh, but we have found that humans, like primates, or other primates, I should say, um, have... Uh, a recognition of snakes that is actually faster than everything else. So with both people and with with different species of primate, they've gone and, and shown them images and, you know, taught them a response when they see an image, let you know once they recognize it, whatever it is. And snakes, for whatever reason, get a faster response than most other things, uh, pretty much faster than everything. Uh, now, they haven't done enough research with other predators with some of these primates to see if they're having the same reaction to other predators. But um, if you look back in the history, snakes were a big deal to a lot of primates because a lot of primates spent a lot of time in the trees resting during the day, uh, you know, may have been active at night and, and snakes were a big threat up there. Uh, you know, a lot of other predators couldn't, couldn't get to them when they're in the trees, so it wasn't as big of a deal. So they also say that's why our eyesight and their eyesight is so good because they had to be able to pick up on the movement of these animals places. So one of the things that they found through this research 
is that there's actually a specific group of neurons um, that are actually activated when you see a snake. And one of the crazy thing is, is somebody like me who loves these animals and somebody like you who may be afraid, we actually have the exact same reaction. The only difference is I'm more educated with these animals, have a better understanding of them, and so I'm not afraid of them. Um, so that's where the education and, and all of that, you can, you can unlearn this fear. Um, it is a natural reaction for us to, to have these neurons go off. Now, they're still researching these neurons to see if anything else activates them, but snakes across us and these primates that have them uh, always activate basically all of these, whereas a lot of other things, it's not as active, doesn't seem to stimulate it as much. So it's very interesting to know that this is something that's, that's in our brain. And uh, these are very, very specific neurons in a very specific place. And there's a lot of research out there which you can look into if you really want to dive down that rabbit hole. Obviously, for this video, we want to kind of keep it a little bit shorter. Um, so uh, another interesting thing that they found is that they would look at children because, you know, we want to decide is this fear learned or is this fear innate? And we're talking about very young children who haven't really learned these fears yet. And they found that children in cities who had probably never seen a snake and children in rural areas who they expected by that point would have seen at least one or two uh, have the same exact reaction time and same exact, uh, you know, things going on when they see these animals. So it's not that these ones that have encountered it are learning a response to this. It's automatically firing inside of people that have never, never come across a snake. Even with the primates that they did some research on, a lot of these were captive bred primates at facilities that had never seen snakes in their lives, but still just shown a picture of snakes, an image of a snake, set off these reactions in their neurons right away. So it's very, very innate in us whether we want to accept that or not. But we have a choice in how we let it affect us through, you know, education, some cases therapy. Uh, they say about 10% of people that have you know, these issues have a fear that's, that's very crippling. Uh, some of these people might cry or get upset just at an image or, or seeing her sitting here with me. Um, and at that point, it becomes very irrational. Uh, people that are afraid of a snake that's housed properly in caging that can't get to them, won't enter the home or that room. Uh, people that avoid going to a zoo or avoid going swimming or anything like that where they may encounter snakes. That's where it becomes very unnatural and very, very irrational. Um, and so that's where you really want to work on it. Now, what can you do to work on this fear? Obviously, education is huge, but there's other things that you have to do. And sometimes where you have this irrational fear, um, in your head, it, it's rational. So it helps to write this down, write down that you have a fear of snakes and write down why. Ask yourself why and write it down and look at it from time to time and go over it and then start to educate yourself. Read up, learn watch these videos, whatever it is that you wanna do uh, to go ahead and get yourself some more information on these animals because a large portion of phobias and fears comes from misinformation. So once you realize that an animal like this is, is a totally wonderful creature with an individual personality that has things that she you know, is afraid of or things that make her nervous, things that make her comfortable, uh, situations, you know, things like that, that there's a personality here and it's, you know, a living, breathing creature that just like us wants to survive and wants to uh, go along to get along. So once, uh, you know, we understand that they're coming at things from the same perspective, it really, really helps us to work towards that. Now, some people will need professional guidance to get over these fears. Uh, immersion therapy is something that some people do. That's what got me over my fear. I, I was initially afraid of snakes. And so education was the first step for me. Uh, I dove into learning about these animals through some people that I had met, had an opportunity to see them work with the animals while I was at a safe distance. Uh, I became curious, I learned more and more. And then once I decided that it was time to kind of get over my fear, immersion was what was wor worked for me. So I just went in and handled a bunch of snakes the first day I ever touched a snake you know, in my life. I went through, I handled a bunch, like 50 of them. And that, that completely got me over my fear. And that doesn't mean I wasn't apprehensive about getting bit or things like that. 
Um, and obviously bites can happen. So we're not gonna sit here and tell you that they can't. Uh, no different than I can bite you, no different than my dog can bite you, a cat, a guinea pig, a gerbil, anything that has a mouth is capable of biting you. Uh, and snakes are no more prone to bite you than I am and, and no more prone than my dog is. It's all about the situations that we put them in and uh, how we allow them to interpret what's going on. So even this snake that's super calm, could I get her to bite me? Probably if I did the wrong things. If I misread her body language, if she told me that she was nervous in a situation and I kept pressing, it may get to a point where she feels like she needs to defend herself. And that's an important thing to remember if you're afraid of these animals. Snakes are not aggressive, they are defensive. So uh, to help you understand that example, you know, it's not something where you're gonna be sitting on your porch and a snake's gonna come tearing out of the woods and attack you. It doesn't happen. It's never happened, it's never going to happen. That's not something these animals do. But what happens is maybe you're out hiking, you're out rock climbing, you're moving a wood pile, you're gardening, whatever it is, and the snake is in its space or a space that it's occupying at that time, and you come in suddenly and you scare them. And so they may react. And, and that's a defensive behavior. That's a, a fight or flight. They feel like flight is not an option at that point. And most snakes, even that, most snakes that do fight are fighting to get to a point where flight is an option. So they wanna scare you away from them because you're scaring them. So they're gonna try to be scarier to, to scare you out of that space so that they can flee to safety. That's their ultimate goal. Um, they know that you're not a food source. And so, they're not looking at you from that, that perspective. They're looking at you as a predator. And, uh, you know, obviously we are predators, especially to a lot of these other animals. So you have to understand that they truly are more afraid of us than we are of them. Now, obviously a snake like this that I've raised, she's not afraid of me at all because I'm all she knows her whole life she's been here. But it doesn't mean that you can't have animals that are this wonderful that you didn't raise yourself. Um, you know, they all have individual personalities and they all have, you know, things that make them comfortable, as I mentioned. So definitely understand that if you do have a fear that you're not alone, uh, that you're with a large number of other adults, understand that there are rational reasons why you have this fear, you know, the innate neurons that you have and, you know, millions and millions of years of, of instinct uh, that was to protect ourselves. And then understand that that fear can become irrational uh, when you're not, when you're, when you're allowing it to control your life or allowing it to keep you out of situations that maybe you would enjoy if you weren't letting this fear stop you. So whatever point you may be at, you can always educate yourself. You're never going to regret getting a little bit of an education. Uh, learning new things is good for us. It's healthy. So go ahead and, and dive in whatever way makes you, you comfortable. If you have a fear of snakes and you're watching this and you want some help getting over it, talk to me. Uh, I am always willing to help people. Uh, that's one of the things that I love most is to take somebody that was afraid of these animals and at least give them an understanding, at least an appreciation to understand their place in nature and how special they can be to those of us that love them. I love this snake. She's my baby uh, and a lot of them are. Uh, pretty much all of them are, but she's definitely very, very special. Um, you know, I love Voodoo Queen here. She's just a wonderful tempered animal. I can trust her with any person, any situation. She's never been nervous about anything. Uh, she's just totally calm, totally cool, totally collected. Um, and even if she wasn't, that doesn't mean I would love her any less. It's just very, very endearing to have an animal like this that I can just take to people and have her be an ambassador. I've taken her to shows and let people that were nervous talk to her and, and get over it. And before you know it, they're holding her. Uh, and that's a wonderful place to be. And uh, so reach out to me, I'm happy to help you. I can provide you with links to some of these studies if you wanna learn more about that or whatever it may be. Uh, but I, I would love to live in a world where two thirds of the population is no longer having anxiety about these animals. I understand there's always gonna be fear, there's always gonna be people that don't understand them and, and that ignorance, pardon that term, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but when we don't understand something and we're reacting to it in a way that it isn't logical anymore, that's what that is. Um, and I'm that way with spiders, so I'm not you know, insulting you. 
I understand that a better understanding of those animals can help me. I am very afraid. I'm in that percentage of people that has an irrational fear for sure. Um, so I'm, I'm very understanding of your perspective. I'm very slow moving. If you're a local person and you're, you're looking to eventually handle snakes, I'm, I'm happy to help you. I have animals that I trust like Voodoo Queen here. Um, that, you know, I, I wouldn't put you in a situation where you're going to get hurt because the last thing that I want is for you finally to be trying to, to embrace learning more about these animals and have you get bit and set you back or make you nervous. I don't want that to happen. Um, you know, that, that completely defeats the purpose. So learn a little bit more, write your fears down. Uh, and if you need to talk to a professional, there's actually some online uh, places that work on this kind of stuff specifically because it's such a broad fear. So you don't even have to necessarily go see somebody in person, especially now with everything going on. You can do it all online. They can help you. Obviously, the immersion side of things and stuff like that would come later anyway. Uh, and that obviously is, is kind of hard to do. But you can do immersion to a certain level on this. Sitting here watching her is somewhat immersion. You might not be hands on. But you're sitting here watching me talk with this animal that, you know, you're afraid of in my hand. And that's a step in the right direction. So let's keep it going. Uh, thank you guys for checking this video out. If you find the information uh, valuable, uh, check out some of my other videos. Hit subscribe. Make sure you turn on your the bell there for your notification so you can see when we go live and discuss things. Also, I'll put a link in the description for some of my um, merchandise now. I just have one design up so far with Mr. Burgundy here. So this is a, a coaster. You can get a set of four coasters on there. Go ahead and put your drink on. You can get this design made on some stickers, various sizes. You've seen the shirt I had if you've been here before. If not, there's, there's shirts, there's hoodies, uh, there's pillows. There's all kinds of stuff you can get with that design on there. So go ahead and check that out and see if there's something you like. Uh, thank you guys for your support, and we'll see you next time.